Hi, my name is Kevin Wright. I'm an entrepreneur, founder, and CEO of multiple companies. Unfortunately, we can't stop all tragedies, but with the proper tools in place, we can make a difference and we can start saving lives today. That's why I got involved. Today I have with me Bud and Karen Peterson. Just two months ago in January, this year, 2013, their 13 year old son, Buddy, tragically decided to end his own life. Buddy was a very big, strong boy, bigger than most kids his own age, but yet he was bullied so bad that he decided to take his own life. And I have them here today to share their story with me. Bud, Karen, thank you for coming. We're really sorry about your loss. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Tell us about Buddy. Tell us what kind of a boy he was. Buddy was the kind of son that everybody wants. He was uh, very generous. He was very warm, loving. He uh, had a heart of gold. And he, he loved everybody and he just wanted to fit in. He was, like you said, a big kid. He loved football. He played football year round. He was a lineman. And he was proud to be a lineman. He didn't want all the glory, but he wanted to know that he opened up the hole for that running back or the quarterback to go through to make the touchdown. That's awesome. And he, he loved that. And uh, he was also a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. Uh, so he was a tough kid. He was, he was very tough. And the type of bullying that uh, he went through was, was mental bullying. You know, physical abuse. Uh, you know, I, I don't think you could actually physically hurt Buddy. Physically, you know. Uh, but mentally, he, he took everything to heart. If you told him something, it was, it was true. You want to believe your kids as a, as a parent. And, Absolutely. you know, so when he told me everything was okay, I assumed everything was okay. Uh, and, you know, he continued. Uh, and then on January 13th, he uh, went to bed. And five minutes after he went to bed, we heard the gunshot. That was, the, that was the end of his life and, and ours as we know it. I'm so sorry. So. Following Buddy's funeral, I received several uh, text messages, Facebook messages, calls from other parents where their kids are telling them what Buddy went through at school. And these kids didn't know who to go to. They didn't know where to go to tell people that Buddy was being picked on. They were, but, they were afraid. And then they're yeah. telling their parents afterwards After. and what was going and, and on we, in the school. And like you said, kids came forward after and told. Mm -hmm. They would have come forward before if they felt there was a safe way that they could communicate Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And that's what our foundation's all about. That's what the Safe to Talk Foundation is for. That's what the school tip line is for. Imagine that a child can say, Buddy Peterson is being bullied by these kids and he can send it and know that somebody's gonna step in and start some intervention and he doesn't have to worry about anyone ever knowing. And something mm -hmm. as simple as a text message or an email could possibly have saved my son's life. You're absolutely right. Could have. And it's, and it's unfortunate that mm -hmm. that wasn't in the school. It's being implemented now. Mm -hmm. We have the, uh, the Greater Salt Lake Unified School District that it's now getting into. We just started this. I mean, we've only been doing this not even a year since we really mm -hmm. started getting schools involved. We now have over a thousand schools involved and we have more signing up every day. So we're really starting to make a change, but we're only in 
percent of schools. And one percent mm -hmm. is not enough. It's not <coughs> close it's not to not enough. enough to make a difference in the lives of these kids. You're absolutely right. There have been 18 suicides of teenagers. The youngest that I know of is 10 years old, the oldest being 17 since my son's suicide nine weeks ago. In Utah? In Utah. That's just unacceptable. It's totally unacceptable. And you know, at the school tip line, yes. we save lives every single day. Imagine at 300 schools, we yes. saved 171 suicides. Imagine what you could do at 10,000 schools. 10,000 schools would be 17, no, 10,000 schools would be 17,000 lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. It's so important that we do what we can to get the school tip line out there to as many people. And like I said before, it's a very small fee to the school, but we have a foundation set up and we know budgets are tight and everyone's cutting back, but this is a safety concern and we're saving lives and there is no price for a child's life. Yeah. And the foundation will support any and all schools that wanna come forward that want the school tip line. If they can't afford it, we find ways for them to afford it, whether it be through a fundraiser where we help raise their portion or through our foundation. Um, Do you have any advice for parents? Uh, believe in your kids, but question it. You know, if you, especially if you start seeing changes or if they're, you're aware of a problem, you know, get them help. And uh, we need to learn to adapt to that, change to that. Uh, Technology, mm -hmm. the social media that's out there, there's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram all kinds of things, and kids are getting bullied on there. Yes. And, yes. and we've got to get there's, involved there's as parents so. and grandparents and aunts and uncles. This, yeah. is, this is not something just for parents and their children. No, this is for the grandparents and the sisters and the aunts yeah. and the uncles and neighbors. The crazy. neighbor can send in a text message, an email. A neighbor can go on, if she sees kids bullying a, a kid on the way home from school, she can go on and send in a tip anonymously. Mm -hmm. What kind of a great tool is that? It's, it's, would be great it's tool. great tool. Just in the weapons alone that are confiscated in schools, 92% of those come from students, but that's only 1% of guns get confiscated. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 92% of those tips are from students. Imagine how many more weapons we could get out of schools if they had this anonymous way to send the message in and know that results are gonna happen we're so grateful that you're involved and that you're doing what you can to help make a difference. And we will continue to be involved until kids can go to school safely. And we're setting up a foundation for Buddy. Yes, we And that's are. in the process. Yes, in the process. And we have the Safe to Talk Foundation. So if anybody wants to help donate to the Safe to Talk Foundation, it, it's a complete write-off. It's a 5013C uh, corporation where you can bring money in to help us provide the tips and the tools of the school tip line to these schools. Imagine if we were only in 10% of the schools, we could save 17,000 suicides a year. We could confiscate 40,000 weapons. The tools are here. They haven't been here in the past, and the school tip line has the tools necessary to make a change at your school and in your child's life. And it's time that we get this in all the schools across the nation. There's 100,000 schools and we only have touched the surface. Thanks again for coming. Thank you, Gail. I appreciate it, and I'm sorry. But you guys are making a great difference and impact, and your work here in the state of Utah helping to change and get this in front of the governor to make a difference, because I think if the parents and, and teachers are really involved, it'll stop. But people have to step in and get involved. Everyone has to be involved. Thanks again. I'm Kevin Wright and thank you again for watching. It's time that you get involved and make a change and a difference in your neighborhood and your community. Visit safetotalk.org to see what you can do to become involved. <laughs>